Hello, I'm Cheryl DeSantis, your Chief People Officer here at Smile Direct Club. Today we're going to talk about leadership in a series we call Lessons in Leadership. And you're going to have the opportunity to meet Justin Skinner, our Chief Information Officer here at Smile Direct Club. So let's get started. Hey Justin, how are you today? Hey Cheryl, I'm very well, how are you? I'm doing excellent. We're here today to talk about our lessons in leadership and before we get started, I just wanted you to tell me a little bit about you, who you are and... I think first and foremost, uh, family man, really, really close with my family and my dogs. Um, you know, I'm all about uh, just living life with the people that I care about and, and just enjoying life and having a good time. And then beyond that, I'm a technologist, very passionate about technology, very into uh, good food and wine, um, and I'm also very passionate about doing something good for the world and just social justice and these types of things. What would you describe as your leadership brand? What would people experience with you as their leader? Yeah, I think uh, authenticity. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a leader that that really likes to take the time to listen. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I'm I'm having one-on-ones with every single team member in technology, of wow. which we have 261 or something like that. So it's going to take you know six months to get through everybody. Yeah. Um, but I love doing that. The insights I gain, the personal connection I gain, um, and the action items that I gain out of those conversations are invaluable. Mm -hmm. um, so I think authenticity, um, but also. Uh, you know, I, I have a high bar for what's expected mm -hmm. of someone um, because I know what I'm capable of. Yeah. Um, so, you know, setting that high bar and expecting more of others uh, can be expected as well. So, Justin, what about the purpose of Smile Direct Club speaks to you? I um, am very passionate about, you know, people finding within them confidence and being able to achieve what they want in life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, through a job or, or through whatever, and um, what we do just truly speaks to that. It brings confidence to people, so they just feel better about themselves. Um, ultimately, hopefully, then they treat each other better, mm -hmm. um, and ideally just creates a better world, you know, for all of us. Yeah, I think that's great. I think when we can unleash the confidence in our team members and in our customers, mm. I really think we can start to shift the dynamic of yeah, what it means. Fully agree. Let's talk a little bit about um, your time here at Smile Direct Club. So as you came into the business, what were some of the first things you noticed? The first thing that, that struck me was um, the energy and the passion of our team members. Um, and I think because we've moved so quickly, there's been a lot of um, team members put into positions of great responsibility. Um, and we've given people the opportunity to try new things that maybe they haven't done before, which is what I love about this company. Yeah. Um, and even if maybe they didn't have all the skills um, you know, w from their history to fulfill that role, the dedication and the passion, the energy they put into the job made it successful. Yeah. Um, and that was the first thing that, that struck me from day one. And then the second thing that struck me was this um, customer-focused lens, this just mm -hmm. relentless attack on how do we have a better customer experience. Those two things struck me um, in my first month pretty hard. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, what I love about what you said was, you know, we do have a mantra here at Smile Direct Club of big jobs early. Mm -hmm. And we believe that if you have the core leadership skills and the core cultural fit, mm -hmm. you can develop over time. And that's how we'll stretch and grow our people. So as we have an organization full of highly passionate, high achievers who want to do their best every day, how do you get your team comfortable with the concept of failure and that that can actually propel you forward? Yeah. I, I like to connect it actually with how we run the business. So we sit right as an executive leadership team day in and day out and we review data, right? And we mm -hmm. test things relentlessly. And every time we test something, you know, someone had an idea and it gets put out there, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. No one gets blamed. It was just a learning experience. So I try to connect the day-to-day -day work that my team is doing to that same mode of working. So for example, someone might have a new solution for uh, a technology feature that they want to try. Let's get it out there. Let's test yeah. it. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't work, it's okay. We learn from it, we improve the solution, and we move forward. Right. So that, mm -hmm. that's the way I like to explain it to my team and, and get them more comfortable with working in that mode. And then I think it takes repetitive f opportunities of failure where there's no repercussions to the person to yeah. get them comfortable with that failure and see, oh, 
nothing's really going to happen to me, uh, you know, as long as we all understand that we're, we're doing this together. Yeah, kind of that safety that there is actual goodness that comes out yeah. of, of that failure. Yeah. I know when I talk about the culture, I talk about that aspect a lot, this test and learn, and mm -hmm. how it actually really frees you mm -hmm. to be more innovative and to bring better solutions to the business. Yeah. Uh, for our internal team members, or even people that are just considering a different role in their life, technology can sometimes be looked at as hard to break into. Right. What would be your advice or counsel for someone who is considering a career in technology? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, technology tends to get thought of as, you know, the nerd in the basement, <laughs> right? Um, and you got to know things about computers. So first and foremost, I would say there's a lot of roles in technology that have nothing to do with technology, mm -hmm. right? You know, we have people who are helping with um, our communications um, within technology and um, helping manage our financials, right, and licensing mm -hmm. and, and stuff like this. So um, first and foremost, don't be afraid that you need to understand technology to be in technology. Um, however, if you are interested in becoming a technologist and you're not one, um, I think l looking at roles within the, the team you're in now, let's, l let's use p and for an example, um, getting into a position where uh, you are a thought leader in the system of which your team uses, so you're understanding the process flows and the workflows within your system. Um, that translates really well into then joining the technology team to become the administrator of that system or becoming a business analyst or product manager to develop requirements for a P&L organization or a marketing organization to then implement a technology solution. So that's a good way to transition. Um, also, I think quality assurance and testing. Um, I think uh, I would love to start seeing um, people from our contact center who, who interact with customers all day to join our QA organizations or our product organizations because they have the best understanding. What, what is the customer expecting, right? And they really understand our systems um, and you don't need to be very technical. You know, you just need to be able to go and test our, our checkout functionality, test mm -hmm. our, our scheduling functionality. Um, I would love to start seeing folks from our manufacturing lines start feeding into our QA teams as well. Um, I just think there's, there's a lot of great paths for you to, to make, make your way in without being an engineer and without really knowing about technology. So Justin, what's your favorite truth of our truths to grin by? D uh, definitely win as a team. I think that should come in no surprise based off of our conversation. Um, and it, I think even more so as we, as we become larger. Um, what tends to happen is we'll form silos and finger pointing will start happening and blame and um, so I think the way the way I like to talk to my team about this is put yourself in the shoes of your leader or your leader's leader mm -hmm. so what I like to do is put myself in the shoes of David mm -hmm. right David doesn't want to hear me pointing a finger at John Sheldon or at Cheryl right. or whoever um, he wants us to work together and figure it out and win as a team yeah. right and and put our put our you know, functional silos aside, and, mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't matter. You know, there's one company, one team. Yeah. Um, so, so when I think of win as a team, that's that, at its essence, that's how I think about it, mm -hmm. and that's why it's my favorite truth. I love win as a team, too. I also love inspired by why. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, just in general in life, where do you go to get your inspiration? I think there's a couple facets of that. So first... I think it's super important that you feel engaged at work mm -hmm. or it's very hard to find inspiration anywhere, mm -hmm. right? Because we spend lots of our time at work and at the office and if you feel yourself wanting to leave and needing that day off, um, you know, I, just reflect within yourself and, and understand, am I truly engaged? And am I, is this something I really want to be doing and am I energized about it? Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I actually get energy when I come to work. Um, and so, you know, I don't have this burnout thing that most people talk about just because I'm engaged and, and this is what I want to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, but outside of that, um, I'm a very introverted person. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I'm in my head all the time and I like quiet and silence. And yeah. um, so I, maybe it's nerdy and maybe because I'm in technology, but I get a lot of inspiration just browsing YouTube and listening to inspirational thinkers and TED Talks and, mm -hmm. 
in these things, and um, it just sort of inspires me to um, continue to move forward, you know, in my life and my career and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then also my my friends. Mm -hmm. So having conversations with my, you know, me and my friend group have always been big thinkers and dreamers, mm -hmm. um, and and so always have something crazy to talk about and some new idea. And I'm a futurist. I like I like where are we going. You know, what's the big idea? And that's what really gives me energy and inspiration. Mm -hmm. So just being able to spitball with them. Um, and have those conversations. That's what that's what gets me going. What legacy do you hope to leave on this world? So, I'm a humble person. I don't care to have a legacy. So what's what's important to me is that the company, Smile Direct Club itself, has a legacy, right? Mm -hmm. So I think if if I can work for a company who, at the end of the day, is recognized that we've changed the world, you know, we've given access and affordability to this product that we provide, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's an amazing thing in, a, in and of itself and a legacy that I want to be a part of. Um, more on the personal side, I would love to be known for the team that had the most people that developed legacies for the company. Okay. Right. So if I can foster an environment where I have legacies popping up left and right all over yeah. the team, that's a success for me. Yeah. I, don't, I don't need the glory and, and, yeah. and all that stuff. Just that, that your team can see their part in our future and, and, and our history. Yeah, That's important. And, and and you know, there's a lot of ambitious people and, and folks that want to create their own legacies too. So how can I enable that? How can I foster that? Yeah. Um, and, and give them the spotlight. That's what's important to me. Well, even having a legacy of being a leader that teaches others how to lead with empathy and care would be fantastic. I, yeah. And I would love more of that. Well, thank you. I think this has been an amazing chat. I've really enjoyed getting to know you. I yeah. think you've given our, our team members a lot to learn. I think you've given people considering Smile Direct Club a good glimpse into who you are and what they can expect. Yeah. So I really appreciate you talking to us today. Yeah. Thanks for having me.